Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. I wanted to make a quick video for those of you who are just starting out learning to code. It could be a daunting task and you're learning front end and you're trying to get into back end and everybody heard Firebase, Firebase, Firebase. But here's the reason why you shouldn't use Firebase as a beginner and use something like Strapi instead. Now, if you don't know what Strapi is, or maybe you don't even know what Firebase is, it's a way for you to set up a really easy backend. So that way you don't have to worry creating all the backend from scratch. You could use either Firebase or Strapi, get going really quickly and build out your application. It's really good for prototyping. And it's really good if you're just on a small team and you wanna build a full stack application with a database functionality without spending many, 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 many hours and money, or even having a need to hire other people to help you. Now, the reason why why Firebase is bad. Not because Firebase is bad. Firebase is actually really, really good. The issue with it, if you're brand new and you're looking to learn new technologies, you want to learn technologies that will help to position you to be able to get a job. And unfortunately, Firebase is a very specific niche. And when I was going through the hiring process, I did not see that many Firebase jobs available. And to implement the functionality of getting things and setting things, it's not intuitive and it's not what you would normally Normally do if you were using something like you know Postgres or SQL or even MongoDB. Also, it is very hard to implement other paradigms in your API. For instance, you practiced REST API, you're really good with it, and now you want to start doing something like GraphQL with whatever database you decide. You could do GraphQL with Postgres, you could do GraphQL with MongoDB. Well, you can't do it with Firebase because Firebase is its own thing. So even though Firebase is excellent, in this case, for you, brand new developer, if you're spending time, you're really not being effective with your learning time and you're wasting your time in my opinion. And I could only tell you that is because when I started looking for jobs, my Firebase experience did not help me at all. And when I did get hired, it wasn't Firebase that we were using on the back end. It was working with SQL, with normal REST API, using the traditional way of hitting those endpoints and querying with SQL. And with that being said, I just want you to be cautious of it. And so what is the alternative? The alternative is maybe using Strapi. Now, what I would recommend is try both of them, but then keep what I talk about in this video in the back of your mind and make the decision for yourself. Now, I don't use Firebase anymore, and I have plenty of tutorials on Udemy that I took that use Firebase. And when I go back through those tutorials, I'm actually taking Firebase out and replacing it with Strapi because I want to have more flexibility to choose the database that I want. For instance, I'm using PostgreSQL because at work we use SQL database and it gives me opportunity to practice the same things that I work with at home on my personal projects are the same things I'm doing at work. So it helps me to develop the skill to work on the actual things that I'm doing and by learning SQL query language by using Postgres, SQL or even MongoDB which is completely different. I still would say there's more jobs out there outside of Firebase. So instead of using Firebase, the best thing to use is Strapi. What is Strapi? Strapi is a headless CMS. That means you are able to create a backend that does not care about what database you use and it doesn't care about what front end you use. You could use vanilla JavaScript, you could use Angular, why? I don't know, but you could also use React because React is awesome. You could use Swelt, you could use whatever insert framework here and it works amazing. And as someone who's just learning front end web development, yeah, one day you want to do back end, but there's so much stuff to learn that trying to do everything at once will hurt you. So I personally, in all of my projects, and I will share more with you, but my stack that I use to build my application, it's React for the front end or Next.js for the front end or even Gatsby for the front end, but the back end is always strappy. You could do it as regular RESTful API or you could use it as GraphQL API, which is like the coolest thing ever. If you've never done it, one day you should do it, but don't rush into it. And it's really amazing. That's what I would recommend to you guys, because that way you could focus on building things, full stack applications without relying on the technology that not everybody uses. Unfortunately, Firebase, and you could do your own research, not everybody use it. Like I would say that WordPress is more popular with PHP than Firebase is. I mean, don't quote me on this, but I wasn't able to find any jobs where me saying that I have this Firebase experience help. In a lot of places, you're gonna be working with more traditional databases. And so why not? use something like Strapi. So Strapi allowed me to really get a hang of how to work with APIs, how to work with RESTful APIs, and it also helped me a lot on 
learning about GraphQL because instead of trying to build the GraphQL backend on my own, I used Power of Strapi to set it up automatically. And then all I had to focus on is using React with Apollo client front end to be able to make queries and get the data I want and to work and continue to build my application without worrying. So that is why Strapi would be my best recommendation for you than Firebase. Now Firebase is cool and like all the cool things we all want to be part of the cool crowd but unfortunately in terms of jobs in my experience i wasn't able to find as many as i would using true and tested technologies like sql or postgres or even mongodb and that's where i wanted to put in my time to practice and strapi allowed me to do that so i'm not saying that don't use firebase just be cautious of it and know what you're getting yourself into. It is a great technology. Their authentication is very easy to do. And I know there's people that use um, Firebase just for authentication and then do something else. But with that being said, let's take a look at where you could find Strapi. It's super easy to set up and you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with it. All right, guys, so here we are on my desktop. You could go to strappy.io and check out their website. The best way to get started is literally click get started button and it's gonna take you to their documentation where you could basically use this one command and get started literally within five minutes. It's so easy, so fast. And once you run this command, you guys are gonna get access to their backend area, kind of like WordPress CMS. Cause Strappy, that's what it is. It's a CMS where you could attach any database you want and any uh, front-end application. So this is my front-end, or I should say back-end, but front-end of my back-end. I could log in and you could see I have events that I created. I have posts. You could add users with basic authentication and stuff like that. So we have events here and the way you make the events, you have this awesome content builder where you could create new collections and you could give the, your collection a name. I'm not gonna do that right now, the whole point. And you could add a name, a slug, location, whatever data type, type you want. And once you create this data type, now you have it available for you. So for instance, here we could take a look at an event. I have an event that I created. All I have to do is just enter this information here, click publish, and it will automatically create an endpoint and populate this data to my website. So instead of trying to kill myself and figure out how to create a backend to power my frontend, I, I have Strapi and I like it way better than Firebase. Now this is publicly available. Uh, you could make this private. For instance, if someone needs to be logged in to get this data, this is publicly available data. So you could just go to the, I'm running at currently, currently on localhost, but I also have this deployed live and production as well. But I'm just showing you as an example, you go to this URL and you get this JSON file back of everything you need. And basically I'm working on my personal blog right now. Here it is. And all this data is being populated by Strapi. So I have these blogs and excuse the styling. I'm still working. This is actually pretty cool because you write the blog and markup and it will translate it to HTML. But the area I wanted to show you here. So we have blog section that you could go to. So right now, these are just a couple of test posts, but you have this events area here. And right now um, I'm working on the functionality to add the event from the front. I didn't do that yet, which I will once you sign up, but I'm able to do it from the back end here. So if I go to events and I click add new event and I'm going to say test uh, just for purposes here, everything's going to be test, pick the date. So I have all this, let's say 4 p.m. Central, Paul, hello. And then let me add the user. And again, all this stuff, people will be able to do it from the front end of the application. Let's add an image. Let's do this little guy again. Finish, scheduled, yep, scheduled. And all I have to do is hit save, hit publish, and that's it. I now have this available live. So if we go here and we refresh, we scroll to the bottom, you see test, test, test. It has that data available. If you go to our website, here we go. I refresh the site. And what are we gonna see? We're gonna see that third event, which is gonna be on the front because it's the recent one that I just added super easily to be able to show you guys. So that's the power of Strapi. It allows you to quickly and easily create a back end so you could focus on creating your front end. Now, the coolest part about it is that you could add any database that you guys want. All right, guys, so here you are. I have two different projects set up and for my tech stack that I'm using, I'm using either React or Next.js. 
which is React on the server side to create my applications. And what I have here is I have my backend that's running Strapi, and I also have my database that is Postgres SQL database. And it doesn't have to be Postgres. I could run, you know, another service like MongoDB with Atlas. It could be anything you want. Right now I'm using RESTful API, but what's awesome about Strapi and not in this project, but you could go to plugins, I believe, or marketplace, you could install this GraphQL and it will automatically convert this to a GraphQL server, GraphQL endpoint, which is amazing. And then, so if you got comfortable with learning about RESTful APIs and now you're like, okay, I want to take my knowledge to the next level. I want to learn GraphQL. Strapi gives you that opportunity to do so. And if you're really into JavaScript, what's awesome is that if you need to add additional functionality besides what's available out of the box, so much available from authentication, from everything else, you could do a lot, you know, that's why I stopped doing WordPress is because there's no reason for me to do WordPress anymore because I could just create a backend super easy with Strapi and create my own front end using React. But also, as you get better with Node, you could optimize and customize Strapi to whatever your heart desires. And I think it's a nice natural transition to go from front end using Strapi to diving into Node.js and getting to a point where you're able to modify Strapi heavily with your Node knowledge, and then you'll be able to write your own API with Node. But for most cases, like 80% of cases for anything you want to do, Strapi is perfect. E-commerce store, perfect. Blog, perfect. All these other, unless it's something very specific use case for 80% of the time I'm using Strapi. I no longer do anything with Firebase for the reasons that I mentioned before is that it doesn't translate well unless you're either self-employed and all you do is build apps with Firebase or you're going to work at a shop which just uses Firebase. But unfortunately, I want to be able to be hireable to majority of companies. And so I want to practice technologies that are more commonly used like SQL with Postgres or MongoDB, you know, and stuff like that. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped to shed some light. I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn Firebase, but in my case, I stopped doing it because it just made no sense from the standpoint of like, I'm limited on time. What technology should I use? I should use technologies that right now I could find a client and I could build an awesome website with a user-friendly backend and the skills that I'm learning with using Strapi, with learning RESTful APIs, learning your FQL are the same skills I could put on my resume and apply to jobs and people when they see my resume they're like oh you use graphql oh fantastic that's exactly what we need you created apps with react fantastic and that is why i've been using strapi lately there's no way in hell i'm going to go back to firebase and again firebase is awesome and it does certain things well but from my perspective in terms of being a developer that wants to use my time effectively and efficiently when i learn is i want to learn the stuff that is relevant to the jobs i'm applying and at the same time if I want to freelance, this gives me the opportunity to do so. So I just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in this video. I love you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, I'm live every Saturday at 6 p.m. Uh, U.S. Central Time. So join us when you can. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.